Good morning, Vincent Church, and welcome. Good morning. Hope everybody had a great week. So anyway, we've been talking this week. We're really looking forward to the time when we can worship together at our church. And it's coming, eventually. But it's, it's bound to be somewhat different. And hugging and handshakes, not in the picture, probably. But these things, these things are a real challenge. It's when you can't share a smile, it just is difficult. And um, we don't know, I don't know. We've been thinking about it. How can we soften this up a bit? So we, we came up with this. Tell us what you think. Maybe? I don't know. Maybe we need to start working on it. <laughs> anyway, let's move over to see Pastor Dave and hear today's message. Take care and have a great week. Thank you, Ron and Vija, for that greeting this morning. Yeah, I think we will all be very glad when those things are gone. But in the meantime, thank you guys for making the best of it, as always. I appreciate it. Welcome, Vincent family. It is good to be back together separately this morning, and I look forward to being together together. Uh, we don't know exactly when that's going to be, and hopefully you saw our update from uh, a couple days ago um, as we try to figure this out. We will keep you posted as we know more, but at this time we don't have a definite date. Uh, so please uh, continue to pray that this passes and that we can make wise decisions, not just our church, but all the churches of the area and, and the country. Uh, they're having a hard time knowing exactly how to do this, but we will continue to do the best we can, and we really appreciate your prayers and support as we move along with that. Uh, but this morning, let's open with some prayer, and we'll move on to some musical worship next. And I do want to say good morning and greetings to all of our uh, new family and friends out there who have joined us since we've gone online. It's great to have you with us, and I would love to hear from you. So if you don't mind dropping uh, something on the, uh, the Facebook page or a YouTube comment or go over to our homepage and uh, leave us a message there. You can find all our contact information there, phone, mailing, email, the whole works. So again, this morning, let's open up with some uh, prayer and then move on over to worship in music. Father, I do thank you for this week. I thank you for a new week, a new day, a new time to see your mercies at work. And I pray that you would show your mercies to each and every one that are here in a way that we could understand. We need that mercy, we need that grace, we need that strength as we navigate these new times. So I pray you'd help us to shift our focus from what's happening to the one who walks through whatever's happening. Thank you for your, your grace, your strength offered to us. This morning I pray we would fully engage in worship with all of our heart in whatever ways we can, wherever we are. And we give all the thanks and the glory to you in your name. Amen. Oh, 
Longing into thy holy likeness to grow, thirsting for more and deeper communion, yearning thy love more fully to know. Open the, wells, Open the wells of grace and salvation, pour the rich streams deep into my heart. Thought and affection, seal me and make, seal me, and make me pure as thou art. Dead to the world would I be, O Father, dead unto sin, alive unto thee. Crucify all the earthly within me, emptied of sin and self may I be. Open the wells of grace and salvation. Pour the rich streams deep into my heart. Cleanse and refine my 
method and affection. Seal me and make, Seal me, and make me pure as thou art. I would be thine and serve thee forever. Filled with thy spirit, lost in thy love. Come to my heart, Lord, come with anointing. Showers of grace send down from above. Open the wells, Open the wells of grace and salvation. Pour the rich streams deep, deep into my heart. Cleanse and refine, Cleanse and refine my thought and affection. Seal me and make me pure as thou art. Thank you, worship team. And for each one of you that took the time to record something to help us get through this time where we can't really meet like normal, thank you for taking the time and the effort to do that. I really appreciate it. So this morning we're going to continue celebrating together. We're going to move from a time of musical worship to remembering one another in prayer. And this week we want to celebrate with those who have celebrations, of course. So this week we have a, so a few birthdays. So Lydia, Alyssa, Dina, shout out to each of you this week. Uh, I hope you find ways unique to our time that you can celebrate, celebrate the life that God has given you the families that he's placed you in and the calling that he has on your life that is being refined during this time so happy birthday to each one of you and also shout out to kevin and erica and also to rich and linda who are celebrating anniversaries this week congratulations to you for another year of marriage another year of seeing your family grow and i know your children are in very different stages of life in your two families but congratulations on, on really doing your best to raise them in the faith and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so we celebrate with, with each of you this week. Also, we want to remember those who are struggling with job or health problems this week in the midst of all this and also our frontline workers. So let's take a moment to pray for them. And for those of you that are a regular part of Vincent, if you're a member here, if you're a regular attender here, we just want to ask you to remember to give toward the work of the church. So as the Lord lays on your heart in whatever situation you find yourself in right now, we ask that you would remember to give toward uh, the work of the Lord and the work of this church. For those of you that are new, maybe you've just joined us this week, maybe you've just joined us since we've been online and, and we're not necessarily your church home right now, uh, please, this, the service is just a gift to you. Just come along with us as we follow Jesus, uh, as we seek him. Just come along with us and, and, and join us in celebration and in learning. So let's go ahead and let's pray for those. And also, we'll, again, we'll take a, a little time for you to pray in your living room, in your office space, wherever you find yourself this morning. Just take some time to pray by yourself or with whoever happens to be around you. Uh, and join the Lord in prayer that way. Father, I thank you that we can gather wherever we find ourselves this week. It's a new season again, Lord, and we're feeling and desiring and, and, and wanting uh, a lot of different things right now. But I pray that our first and foremost would be to want you, to desire you. I know that we want you to do things. We want you to fix this. We want you to change this. But in the midst of all of it, Lord, wherever we find ourselves in life, I pray that we would want you to know you, the fellowship of your suffering, the glory of your resurrection, the wonder of your power in our lives to be part of transforming this world back to your original purpose. So thank you for that, Lord. And this week, Lord, we want to pray for those that are, that are struggling, Lord. There are many that are struggling with the health ramifications uh, of this outbreak, uh, of, of what could happen if we stay in lockdown longer, of what could happen if we open the, the lockdown too soon. Uh, Lord, there's a lot of conf conflict going on there and there's some anxiety around that. And I pray that you would come and bring your true peace to know that whatever comes, our lives are in your hand. You will walk with us through it. You will guide us and you will strengthen us to meet whatever challenge comes our way. 
So may we receive that from you this morning and seek to continue to grow into your image that we may share that with the world around us. Lord, we, we pray for those who are uh, still out there working the front lines, as we say, for our medical personnel, especially our emergency medical personnel, uh, law enforcement, uh, our firefighters that don't get a day off throughout all of this and that face a new risk and challenge on top of their already risky and challenging jobs. Would you please meet them in a special way, draw them closer to you to know your peace that goes out with them every time they take a call, every time they come back to the station, wherever it is, you go with them. Thank you for that, Lord. Those who are working in the stores, Lord, who have more contact with more people than in, in a day probably than most of us do in a week or more, especially right now. Would you really be with them? Give them the peace uh, to meet that job. Give them the thankfulness to have the job, even though I know there can be some bitterness for those who um, who aren't working right now and yet still receiving income. Lord, I pray that you would just protect their hearts. I thank you that they do have a job. Uh, I thank you and I pray that you would protect them in that job, Lord. It's, it's no joke. So I pray that you would really give them the peace to go about that with a sense of joy and a sense of strength that can only come from you. Lord, we want to celebrate this week with Lydia, with Alyssa, with Dina, with Kevin and Erica, and with Rich and Linda, Lord, as they all celebrate their big events this week. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what a celebration or a remembrance looks like during this time for those things. Um, but I pray that they would, Lord, that we would all mark our days, that we would count them, number them, and, and, and make the most of each and every one. And those are important, Lord. When you continue to, to, to strengthen those marriages of, of Erica and Kevin, and also of Rich and Linda, may their former days uh, pale in comparison to what you're going to do in their yet-to-come days. Uh, and also for the, the, the ladies that are celebrating their birthdays this week, Lord God, would you mark this in a special way for them? It might not be the way it normally would, but may it be remarkable and memorable in a new way. So I thank you for that opportunity, Lord. I thank you for the many blessings you give us, Lord. Now help us to take time to pray together where we find ourselves or pray on our own, where we find ourselves at this moment to communicate and commune with you now. Amen. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Uh, let's continue to move on and serve and worship the Lord with all that we are. It's great to be with you this morning, even as we're apart. of May, day number 46 of lockdown. I sort of tend to lose track. But anyway, we are not video professionals, but I just wanted to put together a bunch of short clips just to show you a little bit about our lives and our service here in Nepal. So in the following, you're going to see a little bit about Sushma and Shova, and you'll probably think all we do is wash clothes. <laughs> and then you'll see Betseva making some uh, cinnamon rolls for our top of the world coffee. 
we've been selling a little bit doing home delivery. You'll also see me roasting some coffee. And finally, we'll close out with this a clip about how we uh, observe church here on Saturday mornings. Again, uh, this isn't to uh, impress anybody, but it's simply just to give you an idea about how we're managing our time here. So thanks so much for your interest. God bless. Take care. Stay safe. During quarantine, I've been doing a lot of laundry, and also I've been working with plants and trying out new recipes. And here's a view from our rooftop, ladies and gentlemen. How would you like that? Usually when I look west there, I can see mountains. A little bit of clouds today, but otherwise we're really enjoying the clear skies in Kathmandu. No pollution. Very little dust with all the rain we've been having. Hello everyone. Um, this is how we do wash in Nepal uh, on our rooftop and how we dry it out on the rooftop uh, on the sun. And this is how uh, I've been uh, uh, working in lockdown doing house chores. And thank you so much for thinking and praying for us. And we too think and pray for you. And stay safe. Take care. flower in the lockdown I'm taking care of my all flowers and uh, enjoying my life here yes look at those flowers <laughs> Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in the synagogues and preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. He asked the Lord of the harvest therefore to send out workers into the harvest field. All right, Vincent family, welcome back. Uh, as we continue on following Jesus this week, which is hopefully the goal of our entire lives, uh, we look at this passage in Matthew chapter 9. And, and it's part of this Fully Jesus series. And this week we're looking at Jesus being fully engaged. Now, it's going to be a noisy one this week, and I kind of apologize for that, and I'll do my best to keep it up, but that's kind of on purpose. As we look at Jesus this week, we see in this passage that he went through all the towns and villages. He spoke in the synagogues. 
And so he was out and about. He was a man who was involved. And we see this. And we often think of Jesus. We, we see the passages where he pulls away and he goes off and he spends time with his father. And he, he rests and he gets away from the crowds. And he refills himself and refuels himself. And I hope that you're finding the time to do that this week as well. I know some people are, have extra time on their hands and they're looking for ways to fill it. And I hope you're, you're finding ways to, to, to dig into the Word and to follow Jesus creatively, looking for new ways to freshen up your faith. Um, but the reason Jesus needed to get away from the crowds was to spend time with his Father to be refueled. But it was because he spent so much time with the crowds. And so as we follow him around, we see that he's going through all the towns and villages. We see that he's going to, we, we, we find him on, on, on hillsides and, and marketplaces. We find him invited to weddings and, and interrupting funerals. We see Jesus is in the synagogue, but he's also with the sinners. And it's this great picture of a man who's everywhere. He's trying to be with all the people. And so this morning I decided to come out here to Pottstown because normally when we're not dealing with a pandemic, when we're not in lockdown, this place is bustling. There are, are people here, people hanging out on the benches back here. Uh, we have people in the, in the fountain over here enjoying the fountains. There's another fountain over here. And it's a wonderful place for people to gather. There's a big lawn here that I'm, I'm standing on. And it is a place where people gather. It's a place where things happen. On the weekend, there's a farmer's market right here. Local craftsmen, local growers are showing their wares and, and, and their products and their produce right here. We're in the middle of everything. Over here, this is the police station for Pottstown. Back this way is the courthouse for the area. And then just over here, hopefully we won't hear this firsthand, but over here is the train tracks and the train terminal. So we're right in the middle. It's also the bus hub for, for, the, for this area. And so there's a lot going on. High Street, you can see here, the cars are going back and forth. Not as much as on a normal day. But this is really a hub right here on High and Hanover. I remember as a young person in high school, this was the place to hang out on the weekends. Just down here, you go, you go park and you watch the guys just drive up and down in their cool cars or they pull off to the side and open up the hoods and show you what they've done. And it was really a unique experience and, and that doesn't happen as much anymore. And Pottstown is undergoing a, a, a rebirth and it's fantastic. There's a, a great new restaurant right here, uh, here, Blue Elephant, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the, the, the Playhouse is opening up over here and so we're starting to see new things here. And it's attracting more people into the city, which is great. And I love to see that happening. I love what's happening in Phoenixville. And Jesus is in the middle of that. When we see him throughout these passages, when we see him throughout the Gospels, he's all over the place. He's where the people are. All the people. He's in the synagogues where the religious leaders are and they can listen to him. He's in the marketplace where the tax collectors are taking their cut. He's, you know, I, 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 I wonder sometimes when I, honestly, when I picture Jesus in Galilee, in Judea, I just kind of picture it all as kind of this primitive wilderness. But it's not. It's, it's part of the Roman Empire when Jesus enters in. There are structures. There are streets. There are aqueducts. There are, you know, there is infrastructure. And there is order because of Rome. And so even though it's not as, you know, there's no, there was no Wi-Fi, uh, there, there wasn't there weren't public drinking fountains, I don't think, I don't know that for sure. But regardless, Jesus was in an area that was very much alive. And it never occurred to me till this week, and Mark, this is for you since I know you're always you know, keeping an eye on the hairstyles. You know, did Jesus go to the barber? You know, little things like that I never really thought of in his life. And as I've been watching this, the series that I recommended, The Chosen, you see these little details it bringing this culture to life and Jesus interacting with it. 
But, you know, I don't know if his mom cut his hair when he was younger. He didn't have a wife uh, to, to cut his hair for him. Uh, I have a wonderful wife who does keep me in check and keep me looking good as best she can. But Jesus went into town. He had to buy food. He was a carpenter by trade, from what we know. Was he, you know, was he making and selling to provide for himself early on before he really developed a following and a support system? So we see this is Jesus who very much lives life among us. So when we look at Christmas and we sing songs about Emmanuel, God with us, it doesn't do us much good to then forget about that and think of just Jesus and his disciples moving along, just self-contained, because they weren't. They interacted with society. Jesus picked up his disciples as he went along. He was on the docks picking up Andrew and Peter and James and John, the sons of Zebedee. We, we see them interacting with those people. We see him in town. He's connecting with the tax collectors. He's mingling with the prostitutes. And he's getting in a lot of trouble for it. And that wouldn't happen if he was just out and isolated. He wouldn't attract as much attention. He wouldn't attract as much trouble. But that was never his goal. Wherever we find ourselves in life, Jesus probably took part in that. So if he was meeting these drunkards and these sinners, these, these drinkers that, we, that he gets in trouble with from the religious leaders, he must have been in the places that they were. If we see him getting in trouble in the temple, because we see many times where he's in the synagogue, he's in the temple, we know he flipped over the tables, we hear that part, uh, but he was there. He was in the temple with the religious people. He was out in the streets with the merchants. Wherever we could be, Jesus was. And so today, I look and, and I see, yeah, there's a pretty good chance if Jesus came back, and I don't know why you know, he would choose here, but if he came back in our region, I think he'd be here. I think he'd be here in the public square. He'd be here in the farmer's market on the weekend, admiring the, the produce and, and the industry. He, talked, he shared parables about uh, crops, and about growing, anything from, from grass to wheat, he knew about it. He could speak to it. And he could speak to that here. He knew about what the, the, the excesses of the government. He connected with all the, the, the different segments of society. And we see so much of that right here. But he wouldn't just be here. I'm not saying this is the place he would be. I think he would be out at the Grove of our church, meeting with the religious people, maybe finding a quieter place to speak and connect. There's a train coming. Let's see if we can get through this. So as we do this, we see that Jesus is everywhere. Jesus is throughout society. And so today, where does Jesus live? Where is Jesus? Let's pause here for a second. All right, that's pretty real life. Where is Jesus today? That's not a, not a trick question, but I do want you to think, where is Jesus today? Not where would he be if he came back in the flesh. Where is Jesus today? Where are you today? Because that's where Jesus is. Jesus lives in the hearts and the lives of his people. He will come back once again to finish redeeming the world fully. But for now, he lives in the hearts and the lives of his people. His spirit dwells in us that have called him Lord, that have given our lives to him. So where we are is where Jesus is. Where we walk, we take him with us. Where we speak, we share his words. And I look around and there are all kinds of people here. There are people, uh, ladies, and, and setting up flowers here, putting a new uh, a floral display over here. There were some men here fixing up uh, a little arbor over here. There's some people here who look like maybe they don't have a safe place to, to sleep tonight. And, and they're out and about. Are we out and about with them? Are we taking Jesus with us to the middle of town? Are we taking Jesus with us to our job? Whether we have employees or bosses or both, 
are we taking Jesus? Now, we are because he dwells in us. But are we really taking him? Or is he just kind of tagging along by default? Are we bringing him into the marketplace? Are we bringing him into the legal system? Are we bringing him into those people who look like they are housing insecure? Are we taking him across the street to check in on our neighbor and how they're doing this week? Yesterday, I got to meet some new neighbors on our street. They, we're the second newest family in the neighborhood. This is the newest family. They've been there about six or eight months. And we finally just met them, and I, and I feel bad about that. But as I'm standing there, I'm recognizing I'm meeting them, and, and they found out pretty quickly what I do. I'm a pastor. It's one of the first things that comes up in conversation. And then they tried to figure out where our church was on the map, because, you know, it's not that easy to find, to be honest. Uh, and so we talked through that and thought, well, how am I going to bring Jesus to them? How can I be a neighbor to them? And, and, and I, I didn't just bust out four spiritual laws or, or, or try to make things happen on the spot. But now I know more people in my neighborhood that I can live Jesus to. And to be honest, this week has been really tough. This week I hit, last week I hit a wall like I haven't hit before. It was hard. I couldn't see vision. I couldn't see hope. I was not excited about getting up. And still this week, that hasn't just disappeared. It's hard. This is real. You're all feeling this in some way. And I've said it over and over again. I don't know if it's because, <laughs> because you've lost a job, because you're worried about losing a job, because you're worried about the economy, because you're worried about your health. This is hard. Yesterday, one of my pastor friends that I met with online said that this is, he has a timer, a countdown timer, or a count up timer. He said that was day 60 of the lockdown, 60. That's a long time. It's hitting us all. It hit me hard and I did not want to get up. I did not want to share a message. I did not want to study. I, I just wanted it to get away and put it aside. I just wanted something for me. I wanted to feel life. I wanted to feel something coming in. I didn't want to output. And it really shook me. It really bothered me. And I didn't know what to do with it. Yes, of course, I know all the right answers. I'm going to go study the Word more. I'm going to get up and pray more. I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going to you know, check in with people who can encourage me. But you guys know, if you've been in that place, have you just lost the momentum? You've lost the motivation. It's a hard, dark place. And so I'm in that place where it's like, man, do I even have Jesus in me enough to give out? I shared the example a few weeks ago. If you have a cup that's full to the, the very brim and you bump it, the thing that's going to come out of that cup is whatever you filled in that cup. And so I'm seeing for myself now, oh man, what's coming, what's coming out of my cup? I, I mean, I feel like I'm kind of pushed to the, to the brim of what I can take right now. What is spilling out? Is, is there grace spilling out? Have I filled my cup up with Jesus so that I have that pouring out? I'm not feeling that this week. I'm not seeing it. And that shakes me. And so it's pushed me to come back to a place where I'm filling myself up with Jesus so I have more to give out. What does that mean? Yes, it means I'm reading the Word. It, it, it means I'm listening to other pastors who have hope and life to share and listening to their stories of how they're coping. It means I, I am getting out. I am meeting my neighbors. I am sharing life and hope with them. I'm listening to their stories. Uh, I'm watching things on TV, uh, like The Chosen. That It's not the Bible, but it helps me to flesh out that world a little more. <laughs> Pardon me a second. So, it's really made me stop. I've had to stop. It really makes me think, what do I have? What am I doing? Am I taking Jesus with me to the public square? Am I taking Jesus with me into the empty church office? Am I taking Jesus with me to the places that I have to go, to Costco, to the grocery store? I had a great conversation with a young man, must have been 25-ish, I had to drop off a package the other week and, and, you know, the young people are usually the ones that think they're more invincible, but he was shaken. 
He was living in fear, not knowing if this was going to get him or not. And I was in a better place at that point, and I was able to share some hope and some life with a kid behind me with a mask on in the UPS store just waiting to drop off a package. I have that life to share. And I want to get back to that place. So this week, I'm, I'm out, I'm about, uh, I'm preparing messages, I'm talking to some of you, I'm emailing with some of you. I had an amazing conversation last night with someone who has just I mean, radically made a decision, who's already been a follower of Christ, just radically had a decision with some friends that they want to go further with this Jesus thing. They want to, they, they've been raised in the church, but now they want to make Jesus their own and just run with it. Crazy, radical obedience, whatever it looks like. And that really helps stoke the fire. And so I love hearing those stories because it encourages me to hear what's going on out there, what God is doing, and to be stoked. So church, I don't know where exactly I'm going with this, but the world needs Jesus now like never before. And I'm going to say it again. You can do whatever you want. You can have whatever conversations you want. But the one thing the world is not short on right now is political opinion and backstories and conspiracy theories and distrust. We've got that in spades. But the one thing we're low on right now is hope, is compassion, is truth, is Jesus. So please, Take the time this week. Take care of yourself. And again, if you're struggling with that, if you're on the edge, if you're in a dark place and you don't have that hope, please reach out to me. Please reach out to someone who, who can help you at this point. Find someone who has that capacity. I'll help you. But in this time, make sure that you are filling yourself up with life and hope in Jesus so that you are good yourself, so that you are building yourself up and are strong and healthy. But then also, when you meet that guy at the UPS store, when you meet that neighbor, when you are interacting on the net, on the social media, wherever it is, you have something to offer that your cup is spilling over Jesus and not fear and not anger. And if you're there, I just told you, I'm there too. It's a dark place. It's an angry place. But I can see the hope of Christ and I'm moving toward it. Will you move toward that with me? In the hustle and bustle of everything going on around us, can we continue to lift up and encourage one another that we can be the church and the hope and the light right now? And if you don't have the hope and you don't have the light right now, I don't care how long you've been a Christian, it happens. And if you've never been in that place before, if you still don't know what it even means to be a Christian and you're not even sure why you're watching this right now, there is a reason. There is a God who is setting all things right. He created the world, we distorted it, we corrupted it, and he came to set it right. And he came to set you right, and he came to set me right. And when I say that, I don't mean he came to set you right, boy, we're gonna get you straightened out. I mean he came to make all things new, to restore them to their original design and purpose. He created you with a design and a purpose. He created you very intentionally. And I bet you, you don't really know what that looks like, but together we can encourage each other to dig deeper and to find out who Christ created us to be and to be full of his light and life and hope. So let's go out, let's be Jesus to the world in a time that needs it like never before, but let's not fake it. Let's fill ourselves until we have enough to genuinely offer and we don't have to pretend. Share your stories. Put them out there. Keep using the hashtag, BMC uh, spreads hope. Keep sharing the hope with your friends, your family, your Facebook, your IG feed, your Twitter, whatever it is. Fill it with Jesus, but first fill yourself with Jesus. And if you don't know what that means, if you haven't made that first step yet, just head to the webpage. Just head to the webpage and, and find our contact information. Reach out. I would love to hear that. I love those exciting stories of people exploring and just trying to figure it out. I'm not going to shove it down your throat. I'll just help you to find a way that makes sense to you. So thank you this morning, Vincent. Thank you as well, new friends and family. I look forward to hearing your stories. I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to hearing how Jesus is filling you. 
and how you are sharing that with the world around you that needs to see it so badly. Thank you, family. I love you. And Father, I ask that you would really come and meet us, Lord. Um, this is a new thing for us. Some of us are doing better than others, but it's shaken all of us to some degree. Lord, you are the way, you are the truth, you are the life. You don't give us a set of principles to follow. You gave us a life lived among us and a spirit that renews us and brings us back to who we truly are, not what we've been told. Thank you for that life. Thank you for that truth, Lord. May it spread from each one of us that it may spread to our communities. That during this time of, of darkness and anger and anxiety, that the light would be struck. That the light would catch that one match would light the next one, would light the next lamp, would, night, would light the next um, lamp, on and on and on, Lord. And that this world that has become darker in the last couple of months would suddenly become lighter and stronger. Thank you for your hope, Lord. May we receive it fully and truly and be honest about it and seek everything we can do to give ourselves fully to you because you alone are worthy and trustworthy. Amen. I love the story, again, of the person who called me last night and, and just their desire to see so much light come during this time, that this, this is a time of darkness. And they started out just optimistically ready to go, and then the darkness kind of settled in. But with the hope of some great friends, they are pursuing Jesus and spreading light more than ever before. I love that. Let's share the stories, Jesus. Let's build e <laughs> share the stories of Jesus, family, and let's be the light in this world. Peace.